Yes lads, how's it going and welcome back to another video and welcome to your Leeds United away match review. So obviously the night before I've been doing the match previews, on game day I've been doing the match day vlogs. So a new element to the channel, I'm going to be doing uh, match reviews of the game, just rating the players, rating the subs that were made, rating manager Philip Koku yesterday, rating the away fans and the home fans. If you guys enjoyed the new series, let me know by liking the video, subscribing. We hit 5.3k uh, earlier on in the morning, so cheers for that. And if you haven't checked out my Leeds vlog, be sure to check it out. Definitely not one to be missed. Unreal limbs in the away end. We'll get on to our away support uh, later on. Quite mixed, to be fair. So, obviously, the voice is still a bit gone after that game yesterday. It was pretty mad. Dive right in with the player ratings. Let's start off in goal, Keller Roos. I've given him a 6.2 only because I thought when he first came in and filled in for Scott Carson, he was really commanding. He used his height to his advantage. He'd come out for corners, etc. Come out for set pieces. But I've not really been seeing that recently, to be fair. Uh, he's, he's literally just standing in his net. But to be fair to him, yesterday he made a save when uh Leeds player edge of the box it might have been click had a shot and it deflected off one of our defenders and Roos pulled off a really good save. Um obviously he didn't save the penalty but Click missed it. I believe Click was on it and he missed the penalty. But yeah I think six would be a bit too harsh so I'm gonna go for a six point two for Keller Roos in goal. Uh obviously not the best we've ever seen him but definitely not the worst. I'm going to go fullback Malone. I've given him a 6.1 only because first off, pretty much this goes for everyone. The first half was shocking. Well, to be fair, the first 80, 85 minutes from all of them, not great at all, but slowly, slowly developed into the game. Leeds constantly retreating and retreating as the game went on. And the fullbacks were using that to their advantage coming forward. Going to give him a low score because too many sloppy mistakes in that game. So 6.1 for Malone. Uh, and then... Starting off with the centre backs, we're going to do Matt Clark first. I'm going to give him a 5.9. Wasn't great at all, really. He was really slow on the ball, kept losing it. Him and Keo collectively must have lost it about 50 times, especially in that first half. When they kept the high pressure on us, obviously it was different for the last 10, 15 minutes when they sat back. But when they were pressing, constantly pressing us, we were just falling right for it, playing right into their hands. Uh, and yeah, probably one of the worst performances I've seen from Matt Clark this season. And next to him, Keo, I've given him a six. A bit higher just because he was giving it the big into the Leeds fans. And giving it the big into Marcelo Bielsa as well. If there's anyone in there, proper derby boy, it's got to be Richard Keo. So I'm going to go for a six out of ten for Richard Keo. Not amazingly better than Matt Clark. The next fullback, Max Lowe, who... Wicked run down the line to obviously last minute to contribute to Chris Martin's goal. He took out about two or three players out of the game. He's chipped down the line and put the ball into Patterson, I believe it was. And then obviously Martin has put it through in the bottom right corner. But I thought Max Lowe, pretty much like Malone, he, came, he became more confident as Leeds sat deeper and deeper. Uh, obviously, for the majority of the game, he was not great. So Max Lowe gets a 6.7 out of 10. So, so far, the best um, out of the back four on the keeper. And then we go on to the holding midfielders. Koku played two yesterday in Bielik and Huddleston. So, first we'll do Bielik. £10 million player, this guy. And I have to say, from what I saw yesterday, he didn't look like a six, seven million player. He was very... I'd probably say he was below average. He was getting bodied constantly by click. He's a big guy, Bielik, but he was getting dashed around... Like it was like a five foot ten player, not like a six. How tall is he? Like six foot four. He was getting dashed around too easily, and we really lacked that physicality in the middle of the park yesterday. We were getting dominated in that third of the pitch, as well as pretty much every third of the pitch yesterday. But in particular, that third of the pitch, uh, click. Who else was it? Um, even Hernandez coming, dropping deep, and then getting the ball easily off Bielik and Huddleston. Bielik gets a five point two out of ten. The worst so far, really, and I really do hope his performances pick up. Um, but yeah, he wasn't great at all yesterday. And then next to him was Tom Huddleston, who I've believed a little bit better, but still he was nothing. He was he wasn't even that good. Really. Tom Huddleston, a five point eight out of ten. I don't think he would be on that six level because sometimes around the 80th minute he was controlling it and you know finding some decent passes, but for saying his height and his stature. He was 
getting dashed off the ball too easily. And you really can't have that as holding midfielders in the team. You need them to be the most physical and the most, you know, confident on the pitch. And Bielik and Huddleston just weren't that yesterday. Um, so, yeah, now we're going to move on to, to the attacking sort of third. So that was Dwayne Holmes, who I thought had an all right game, to be fair. I'm going to give Dwayne Holmes a 6.6 .6 out of 10. He was OK. I mean... Obviously, he's a little guy. He didn't win any header that he went up for, but you can't really blame him, um, especially against the likes of... Who was it at the back for Leeds? Cooper. Not great, though, was he? I mean, probably one of the worst times we've seen him this season. A Josef Zoon, oh my days, this guy. I don't know what Koku sees in him. Obviously, he had to start him because Lawrence was out due to his suspension, but I've given Josef Zoon a 1 out of 10. I put, like... I rated him 4 or 5 and put it on Twitter and told you guys to discuss it, but... I've been thinking about it. I don't even... Four or five was very generous. I've given him a one because I did not like the way he was playing at all. Pointless him being on the pitch. He was pretty useless. And I do hope he can pick up form, obviously, going into Brom next week, which is going to be a really enticing game of football. And I hope he can pick it up because performances like that, you're going to be dropped easily. Um, and then the two strikers who... Uh, well, I'll say strikers. Wagon was more out wide and then it was Mario up front. Wagon, I've gone for a 6.6 .6 out of 10. To be fair, in the first half, I'm not even going to lie, I didn't even clock he was on the pitch. But he picked up a little bit after the second half. Um, nothing amazing, pretty average, 6.6. .6. And then Jack Murray, I mean, I put 6.7, but having been looking at it, I'll probably rate him lower. I'll probably go for something like a 6.4 or 5. I definitely wouldn't rate him higher than Wagon, but... Murray yesterday, he was just isolated. Obviously, he ended up being brought off. He was isolated and he's not that type of player where he's, you know, he's the out-and-out -out striker. He has to play off the shoulder of someone and I'd love to see him play off the shoulder uh, of Martin next week. Yeah, I just thought he didn't have many chances. I was hoping for some top, top quality football from him like the last time he was at Ellen Road, but unfortunately, it was nothing like that. All right, so now on to the subs. So first up, it's got to be done. Chris Martin, got to give him 10 out of 10. If he weren't on the pitch... Want to slot that in in the bottom right corner. He deserves a chance against Brum, in my opinion. Um, so he gets a 10 out of 10. Could have given him a 9, but hey, why not? If it weren't for him, we would have lost 1-0. So big up Chris Martin, uh, and hopefully he's found his stride. It looks like he's lost a lot of weight as well, so fair play to him. And I hope this proves to Koku that he should be in the squad. Obviously, it's only one game, and we have to see how he does against Birmingham. But from what we saw against Leeds, you know, the ball was constantly being kicked up, and... That game was perfect for him. Top quality decision from Koku there, bringing him on. He was holding it up. Also, a top quality finisher, uh, sent the away end into absolute carnage. So, fair play to Chris Martin. And the next substitution, Jamie Patterson, who, to be fair, apart from today, his performances, sorry, yesterday, his performance has not been great. Uh, came on, solid impact player, uh, and I've gone for a 7.5 out of 10 for Jamie Patterson, obviously setting up the goal. And from what I saw of him, it was actually all right, to be fair. Surprisingly, very good. Next one was Jason Knight, who I've also given a 7.5 out of 10. Obviously, did nothing spectacular in the game. Couldn't really give him higher than an 8. But, to be fair, he came on, an impact player, fresh legs, sort of quicken it up, uh, build the momentum in the game in our favour. And he did that. It was quick feet, quick subtle feet in the middle of the park. So, he gets a 7.5 out of 10. Um... So there are the subs, all rated pretty highly from me. And that takes me on to the manager, Philip Koku. I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. I didn't really support him starting Josef Zoon, but he gave him a chance and he did not deliver. I don't see anything wrong with him giving him a chance. But the subs he brought on were all top quality, great decisions. He brought Martin on and he scored. Patterson he also brought on, uh, who assisted. And Jason Knight was fine, you know. I couldn't see any faults in him yesterday. Obviously... A big physical side in Leeds, and he held it up pretty well, so fair play. Um, but yeah, I thought Coco was alright yesterday. And when we scored, he did go pretty mad. Uh, I know you lot say doesn't show emotion, but to be fair, I like it when our managers show emotion. Philip Coco gets an 8. So, there's a squad, subs, and manager done. Now we're going to move on to the fans. So first up, we'll do the home fans. Obviously, Alan Rowe. Compared to the previous few times we went, I think a lot of Leeds fans were constantly thinking in the back of their mind, especially after Click missed that penalty. It was like, hang on a minute, I think they're going to score it. So they weren't that loud. I think a lot of them were very nervous. They didn't want anything happening that would cost them from getting all three points. And obviously it did, thanks to man like Chris Martin. But yeah, I mean, they weren't that... 
Obviously, they were right after they scored decent limbs as well. When who was it who scored? Max, yeah, it was a Max Low own goal. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give the home fans an 8.5 out of 10. Normally, I'd say 10 out of 10. The last few previous times I've been, they've been top quality. But this time, not amazing. Uh, so 8.5 out of 10 for the Leeds fans at Ellen Road yesterday. And then this takes me on to the away fans. We took about 1,000 um, to Ellen Road, which I personally think is not good at all. We should have sold out, really. There's n not really much of an excuse. Yes, it's on Sky, but look, it was a Saturday midday. You didn't even have to leave that early. We left at like 10 o'clock. 1,000, it is quite poor. I wish we were up there with, you know, one of the top top set of fans in this league, especially away from home. And I do believe it's pretty poor that we didn't sell out. Having said that, the limbs at the end were top class. Obviously, they usually are in the last minute to salvage a point. But uh, yeah, the limbs were top class. Did not expect that. I literally, I thought I was dreaming to be fair, because that whole game, we were shocking. Um, and to come away with a point is massive. And I do think that that's what will cost Leeds this season. They're not ruthless. Ruthless, sorry. And like they had like 64% possession. That was our only shot on target. And Chris Martin bags it. Top. I mean, it was an all right performance from Leeds. Probably better than average. They absolutely dominated us. But they were only able to convert one goal. And that isn't enough if you want to finish top two in this league. But we'll have to see at the end of the season. So, away fans, during the game, we were awful. I'm just going to put it out there. During the game, we were not good at all. Um, but last minute, crazy limbs. Uh, so, I'm going to give the away fans a 9 out of 10. Just for, the, just for them limbs. If we, didn't, if we didn't score last minute and we didn't go that mental, I probably would have given us a 5 or 6. Because we didn't even sell out that bottom block. Uh, and it wasn't that great numbers-wise. Neither will be that loud as well. So, But yeah, them limbs at the end. Crazy. So that, that bumps us up to a nine. But anyway, that's the end of the review. If you guys have enjoyed, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, road to 6,000 subscribers. Let's get it. And don't forget to check out my match day vlog from yesterday's game. Absolutely unreal. All goals captured, obviously. And I will see you all Friday night for the Brum preview. Cheers for watching and take care in a bit. So my name is Hardeep, I'm from the Magic Sponge and we create uh, football, fan art, uh, loads of badges and players, you might have seen it. Um, if you want to have a look, uh, just go to www.themagicsponge.co.uk and uh, let us know what you think. <laughs>